You may have wondered, how do we know how old things are, like stars, rocks, trees, or the Earth? Scientists have developed sophisticated techniques to measure the ages of these things. More specifically, we know how the protons, neutrons, and electrons in an element will behave over time. Measuring these changes enables scientists to get an informed estimate of an object's age through a technique called radiometric dating. But many Christians wonder whether radiometric dating techniques offer a reliable way to measure the Earth's age. Let's take a closer look at how these techniques work and try to decide. In order to accurately measure an object's age, there are three things you have to know. One, the element's decay rate, or half-life. Two, the initial amount of an element. And three, the final amount of an element in an object. Say, for example, that we wanted to date the age of a rock. One way this may be done was by accounting for the radioactive decay of an element known as uranium-238. In order to get an accurate age, scientists need to know the half-life of uranium-238, the initial amount of uranium-238 that was present when the rock formed, and how much uranium-238 is present now. Scientists have verified that uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. As uranium-238 decays, it changes into a more stable element. In this process, 32 protons and neutrons change into helium and evaporate, which leaves 206 remaining. The element with 206 protons and neutrons is lead. So the amount of lead atoms increases as the amount of uranium decreases. Measuring this ratio is a key to measuring the object's age. When scientists measure the ratio of lead and uranium that is present today, they can run the clock back using the half-life and determine how long ago the rock formed. Scientists have developed sophisticated calibration techniques to account for any original amount of lead that would have been present when the rock formed. Calibration is important because some environments impact the initial amount of an element that was present in a sample, while other environments do not. This is where most of the confusion about the reliability of radiometric dating comes in. Let's use a simple example. If you're taking a selfie with your friend, you'll need to make an adjustment to your camera depending on the amount of light in the environment. If it's dark, you'll need to use a flash. But you do not have to account for the temperature in the environment. The lack of photons in a dark room requires the camera to compensate in order to get an accurate picture. It, however, does not need to compensate for an environmental factor such as temperature. So it doesn't matter if you're at the beach or in the snow. The same is true for an accurate picture of the initial amount of an element. Some environments will require scientists to make an adjustment for the initial amount of an element that is decaying, while other environments will not. Accounting for this is a process called calibration. If you don't properly calibrate your measurements of elements by taking environmental variations into account, you will end up with an inaccurate date. Some famous examples of inaccurate dates that circulate on the internet are trying to measure the ages of live snails, recently burned tree bark, and coal that has changed into diamonds. These inaccurate dates are the result of poor calibration. We will cover some of these in a different video. Radiometric decay provides an amazing tool to measure different ages. It's incredibly useful for validating the chronology of events in the universe, as well as the biblical sequence for creation. We can look at dates for events like those mentioned in the Bible, including continent formation, the appearance of animals, and even events in Israel's history, like the construction of Hezekiah's tunnel and the writing of biblical manuscripts. If you think about it, radiometric dating is a God-given way of allowing us to peer back in time and discover more about how He made the world.